Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sister Tara, I know this is your, your first class, but welcome. We're so glad to have you both this morning, uh, but also as a, as a member of the family. Um, this, this final session really is uh, about reflecting and, and just talking through what we've learned. But I'd love to, to hear from you just about your experience uh, at Parks and, and kind of what drew you and compelled you uh, to keep coming back and then to join the family, if, if, you, would, if you would be open to share. Sure. Um, <clears throat> I grew up uh, going to uh, a missionary Baptist church in North Carolina. Uh, and that was many moons ago. Uh, and I moved to LA many moons ago. Uh, and um, when I started seeing my uh, now husband, we were going to his uh, church that's uh, close by. Mm -hmm. And he grew up Lutheran. So oh. I started going to that church. Um, and, you know, I loved it, but it wasn't like it spoke to me, but there were still, you know, I kind of missed, um, I guess, the feeling of my church back home because um, I have a, a whole family full of preachers. I'm a preacher kid. And <laughs> oh, wow. so, so I kind of, you know, I kind of missed, you know, there was like something that I was still missing, even though I enjoyed going there. Um, the for the formality of the Lutheran church was something for me to get used to because Baptist that I went to was very loose, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> fun, but loose. So, um, so yeah, so I just, uh, I think I started going to Parks Chapel during the uh, pandemic, actually. Mm -hmm. It was like right after you guys uh, started opening back up. Um, and I just kind of looked around for places that were near me because I live in the valley uh, mm -hmm. and started going. I really enjoyed uh, the message. You know, I had a warm feeling from the church when I was there. The music was great. Uh, and so it kind of intrigued me to keep coming back. And each time I came back, you know, I just uh, had a great feeling and to me I feel like church is a place to go where you can just sit and be at peace and get restored from the week that you've had and mm -hmm. kind of reset mm -hmm. uh for the week ahead and I just really kept having that feeling and on Sundays when I wasn't able to go I missed going so that was kind of how I knew that it was um, the place for me to join. Uh, I don't know that much about uh, AME. I watched the two uh, previous, the first two new members classes on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, so I did go to the website and read about, uh, you know, the history of the AME church and, you know, looked at the doctrines and stuff um, to try to prep for the third meeting, yeah. but I couldn't get in last time. So I was like, I'll try to get in today, yeah. but I'll probably do like the next full round yeah. um, in person. Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, awesome. Dr. Hahn. Yes. Anything you'd like to share, sir? Um. Just, just the sharing, the fact that um, the the gathering of the people of God, and when one when one has other reasons or uh, other events, one misses so much mm. when fail to attend regularly. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the, the, the crux of it all. Uh, we have to be consistent and be regular with our doings as the Lord is consistent and regular with us. Is, is a key point. 
Amen. So, did I get everybody? Shelly. Oh, is Sister Shelly on? Yeah. Sister Shelly. I am. Hey. Hello. What's hey. going on? <laughs> What's happening? What's happening? So, <laughs> happy Saturday. So, for me, <laughs> happy Saturday to everyone. So, for me, I was so happy when you shared about different books that you can look at to learn about the, you know, the Bible, because I'm sitting up here like, he has all this knowledge. And yes, I truly believe that you have been called. That's not, I'm not doubting that at all. But it's like just to have the different books that you can look at to break down certain scriptures because some of the the words in there I don't understand it I I still go back to the very first sermon that you had and the the book that you had and then of course I got the one to do the actual um scripture and mm -hmm. I'm like where is this man coming from but I'm just like it's just so exciting to um that you do go through all of the different books and that there's a great breakdown on it. And another part that I really liked is when you cover the Old Testament and the New Testament and breaking it down into the different segments of it. That mm -hmm. was fascinating to me as well. And I've been born and raised in the AME church. My grandfather was a presiding elder, but the way that this new members class has been broken down has been so awesome and i'm so glad that i'm a part of it i'm glad i'm glad and thank you i'm glad and, and just thanks for for participating um so there's a few things let me grab something real quick hold on All right, so there are a few things that we want to, that some tools that I want to share that we'll share uh, with the rest of the community uh, throughout the year. Uh, but for new members class, I always want to make sure that we have uh, a good firm foundation of tools that we can use. Uh, one of them is some tools to just be able to start our day um, and some devotional tools, some study tools. I'm gonna ask Brian to pull up the how to study the Bible, um, Bible study. So we actually have a one month series that breaks down how we read the Bible and it breaks. So it does some of what we did in, uh, in the second session of new members class but it goes much more in depth. It talks about uh, how to read it from a technical standpoint, uh, how to read it from a relational standpoint, what's our relationship with the Bible. Um, and so I, I, I really encourage people to, to use that because it allows us to see uh, so the, the Bible and what's happening so much differently. Uh, Sister Shelley, Shelley, when you talk about um, the, the use uh, or the, the sermons, um, I was just blessed with people who had uh, taken the time to actually learn what was going on inside of each text, right? And so, uh, so, so for so long, sermons had been kind of built and based off of one line or one segment of scripture. Um, but when you look at scripture in the context of what's happening in that time, it says all these other things to you, right? And that's not just important for a pastor or a person who's preaching, but as believers that um, a lot of times when people talk about the Bible being the living word of God or, or, you know, we talk about that from really like a religious perspective. But if you actually believe it, uh, what you'll find is when you read full text, when you have understanding about what's going on, it actually is even more applicable to our lives, right? 
And so um, to help with that, I want to offer a few things. I'm going to put some links in the chat. Uh, the first is really simple, is uh, a Zondervan study Bible. And this is actually the, the Bible that I use. You can, you can get an electronic version, uh, but it's the Bible that I use when I study. Uh, one of the reasons that I enjoy Zondervan is because, and actually that's the Amazon link. Let me get the actual link for Zondervan website. Uh, the reason that I like Zondervan is because at the beginning of each, uh, at the beginning of each book of the Bible, what it provides is a historical and cultural breakdown of what's happening like, uh, and there's always these questions that I encourage people to ask. Uh, who is the, when is it being written? Who is the writer? Who are they writing to? And what's happening culturally in that time? Uh, and Zondervan gives a really great synopsis in the beginning of each book of the Bible so that when you're reading, you know what you're actually reading, right? <laughs> you know who the writer is. And, and, and again, that question is important. Uh, if, if, you, if I am writing a letter, it's probably, and, and you're using this letter to create how you live your life, it is probably good to know something about me, right? Because I might be crazy. And now you've based your life off of a bunch of crazy things. And I say that because so much of our life, so much of how we understand the Bible, so much of our church rules and doctrines are based on the life of Paul, right? And so it's probably a good idea to know who Paul is. Uh, it's probably a good idea to know that he started out as a murderer, you know, that his, his relationship with Jesus starts out as a persecutor of the church. Uh, that might be something we want to know. It's important to know how far along the church was by the time he steps on the scene as an apostle. It's probably important to know that you know, this is a segment that we understand about what's being written. And so Zondervan is a really like strong, tangible tool to use uh, to help us have context to what we're reading. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, the next tool is uh, a really great, anybody know what the word apologetics means? Don't go Googling it, Sister Paula. <laughs> Apologies. Anybody, anybody want to take a guess? Apologetics. To apologize? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Not quite. Scriptures to say you're sorry? No. <laughs> <laughs> Close. Um, so... Anybody else? So uh, apologetics are, uh, are developed arguments and explanations uh, that justify uh, a topic. When we talk about Christian apologetics, what it is are tools uh, that help us to verify, do, uh, point to documentation, uh, that give validity to what it is that we say we believe, right? Uh, apologetics are important in our intellectual Christianity, right? Because uh, while this is a faith practice and it deals with our heart, it deals with our soul, uh, God does not desire us to be ignorant believers. God is not interested in folks who believe in him. Christ is not interested in folks who believe in him because they don't know anything better. Uh, as a matter of fact, if we look at the spread of the church, uh, the, the largest groups of folks who receive salvation and turn to Christ after Acts are people, and even at, at the beginning of Acts, when the church, is, uh, when the spread of Christianity begins, are people who wanted real information that verify and justify that Jesus was, in fact, who he says that he is. So when we look at Peter's long diatribe in the beginning of Acts, where he talks about the history of the Jews, when he talks about what they do to Jesus, and then uses what he just talked about to reaffirm who Jesus Christ is. That's apologetics. 
Uh, it, it, is an, an, it is our explanation of why we hold this faith. Um, so many apologetics and apologists are still based on Western European white male Christianity. Uh, a tool that I really enjoy that I use and I encourage people to use is called the Jew 3 Project. Uh, and I'm putting all of these links inside the chat. Uh, all of these resources are both available on, uh, on the web, but all of them also have apps that you can have on your phone. I just download them all to my phone. Uh, Jew 3 is actually a really amazing apologetics tool because it is focused on uh, the Bible from uh, from an African ex from an African American experience, and and so they have conver and they have conversations and podcasts that deal with critical questions about the Bible. Uh, they 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 offer an opportunity to answer critical challenges about the Bible. Uh, you know, uh, did is is Christianity the white man's religion? Uh, why are young people leaving the church? Uh, all, they have all of this great information and studies. They, they engage with a number of scholars uh, of, from different ethnic backgrounds from all over the world to talk about these tough questions. And it is uh, specifically directed towards African-American believers. So for folks who have been with us for a while, when the lay organization did the screening of unspoken film during lay worship service, that film is produced by these same folks. Uh, and so I, I would encourage you to check out uh, the Jew 3 project. Uh, the next is an app. And that app is called the Centering Prayer app. Uh, the Centering Prayer app is one of the challenges that I that I face is that I always have a bunch of stuff to do in my life, uh, but I also am really responsive to uh, notifications on my phone. And so the Centering Prayer app will actually uh, share a notification with you that reminds you to take a moment. It provides a scripture and a meditating point. And, you know, you, you can set the, the purpose, you can set uh, what types of things you want, you can set the time, and it just serves as a reminder and provides tools that you can use to, uh, to enhance your spiritual practice. And so if you're like me, the Centering app is really great. It reminds us to take a, a moment out of our day to reflect and turn to God. And it gives us the tools, so we're not like, oh, what what scripture do I need? What what's going to help? You know, you can add a number of things that you like to focus on, and it will pull together kind of a uh, a uh, devotional focus for you each time. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, it does. Yes. Right. Uh, and then the final electronic tool that I want to share. Uh, is Bible Gateway. So I know that folks may have a bunch of Bible apps on their phone. Uh, I appreciate Bible Gateway because it, one, allows you to access a number of different translations of the Bible right there in the palm of your hand. Um, it, it, it provides, again, uh, if you don't have a scripture to focus on for the day or something to encourage you, it sends you, you know, each morning it has uh, a Bible verse uh, at the top of the at the top of the page, or when you open your app. And it, again, it's just and it it's just a really great interactive app. You can Google, you can not Google, you can start put a word in the search bar, and it'll show you everywhere that that word shows up in the Bible. Uh, it's a it's a really great tool. You can type a phrase in there. And it'll show you where that phrase comes up in the Bible. And so I, I really want you to have tools to be empowered, informed, and educated as believers. Um, because uh, we get about four hours of access to each other a week, right? Six if we count the fullness of worship service. Um, and that may not be enough. It probably is not. You know, even if you come to service, go to Sunday school, participate in every Bible study, uh, 
chances are there is something else that we will need. And so I want to put some tools in your hands to, uh, to be able to better mold your Christian experience. Any questions so far? No, I no yeah. questions, but thank you so much for this. Mm -hmm. Thank you. For those I, who are not able to um, copy these or get them, I'm putting them on a on a email. Well, I can actually text them to you or email them to you so you can click on the links. Thank you, Sister Paula. You're so awesome to do that. Awesome. Uh, as an AME, there are three, and we, we alluded to this last week. Is that Sister Lavoie that just jumped on? I was trying to jump on. Uh, we talked about uh, the Bible, which we have given some resources to. Uh, what uh, The last thing I'll say about that, uh, in terms of the Bible, my preference uh, for our study, and I think I talked about this last week, uh, but the preference for me, for our community, is the New International Version of the Bible. Uh, it's what I use to teach from. It's what we use for back to Berea study and then the studies that I lead um, and throughout the week when I when I lead. Uh, and so I, I, I encourage that because it is the version that is most al best aligned with uh, the original text but also just has really plain, relatable language. And so uh, I would encourage everybody to at least mark that in your Bible apps so that when we are together, we can all be reading from the same text. Uh, the second is the AME discipline. Uh, the AME discipline is uh, our rule book, essentially. Uh, my grand, my aunt, my great aunt used, always says, not used to, she still says it every time I sit with her, uh, that you can do anything that you want to do in the AME church as long as you use the discipline. That if there's anything you want to know or anything you want to get done in the church, that the AME discipline will teach you how to do it. Uh, it is the equivalent of the Constitution of the United States for African Methodism. Um, the AME discipline is updated every four years uh, during general conference, uh, which is difficult because it's released every six years. So if you can imagine how confusing that math is, uh, by the time we get the, the book with the rules in it, it's time to make new rules. Um, but the AME discipline lays out uh, who we are as a church. It lays out um, our structure. It lays out the rules and guidelines. Uh, one of the things that you'll see in at annual conference is when they do things like the uh, designation of churches and designation of pastors. Uh, the way that they create that marriage is uh, you have pastors A through D, and then you have churches A through D, and they try to meet those up because uh, different pastor or different churches require a different type of pastor. Different types of pastors are, are uh, recommended to be pastoring at different types of churches. And so it may be uh, a church that can't sustain a full-time pastor. And so you have a pastor who may be <laughs> Uh, is getting their first church, right? Uh, or you have a you have a church that absolutely needs and has the resources to sustain a full time pastor. So there's just things like that that are in there. Uh, you'll receive a discipline. You'll actually receive the newest discipline that we have, uh, the the newest version. As next year we go to uh, make a, make new rules, but you'll have the most up to date version of it. And I encourage you to go and read through it. It, it is uh, good bedtime reading if you can't sleep. So it's, it's not a page turner, but I think it's important as you are a part of this community to have access to the information that will encourage you and inform you. 
uh, about who we are, where we are, and what the what the opportunity is. Uh, and then the third book, the AME Hymnal. Uh, the AME Hymnal, I would encourage anybody uh, who is looking to build up their spiritual strength, don't leave your hymnal as the book you open for the first 10 minutes of service on Sunday. Um, along with songs in the hymnal are also all of our liturgies, all of our ritual work, all of our ceremonies. Uh, so for example, this Sunday, we're going to be baptizing Sister Becky. And the whole exchange that we go through during baptism, that's inside of our hymnal. Uh, there's also uh, in the back of the hymnal and in the index, there are songs for different seasons, right? So if you're or for for different kind of experiences. So if you are happy, they give you they tell you where to find songs about happiness. If you are uh, going through a tough time, There's, you know what I mean? If you need strength, there are songs that they point you to and all of that is right there. And again, it's, it's just one of those tools that I think we underestimate the value of. And so you'll receive a, a, a hymnal as well. And I just want to encourage you to make use of it because it will have such a profound impact on your ability to, to build your relationship with Christ with your own spiritual practice and with the church. Questions so far? Hey, Sister Lavoid, how are you? <coughs> oh, Pastor. All right. Yes. Hi. Hey. And unmute me. We can hear you. I said, hello, Pastor. I had oh, to unmute me. Oh, no problem. Good morning. Good morning. Glad to have you. Glad to have you. Um, so, Pastor, I have to say that um, from last week's class, mm -hmm. um, I have a, a King James Version Bible, and it's sentimental to me because my mom gave it to me. Mm -hmm. um, but I got to get a new Bible. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely have to get a new Bible now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that's not, I, I have a King James Bible that uh, was handed down. I think I'm like the fourth generation or third generation to have it, you know, and that actually is the Bible that I use for uh, for my personal meditation. It's the, the Bible that's set in my prayer space in my house. Um, and so I would, you know, keep, hold on to it, use it. But Oh, definitely. Yeah, yep. when, I, when I talk about NIV, it's really, that's the best Bible to study from. Um, mm -hmm. That's the best Bible. If you are trying to understand what a text is saying, that's where I would point people to first. Yes, and I use the Bible Gateway. I found it during the pandemic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Praise and, the Lord. Uh, yeah, I use that. And I also found, uh, I don't know where I found it, but I was searching online and I found the um, communion right in the middle of the screen um i i found the 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 back of the hymnal for the communion and so i was following along with that as well mm, yeah oh wow yeah all that's in there all that yeah. is in there um and and it, it and it it does something different when you're reading along huh it does yeah yeah it does. yeah um so the next thing I wanted to ask about was uh, our own spiritual practice. Um, and, and you can feel as comfortable to share as, as, as openly as you want. If you don't have a spiritual practice, that's okay too. I would rather know that than, you know, we all sit up here like, oh yeah, I pray 45 minutes every single day, twice a day. Uh, but what does our spiritual practice look like? And, and I ask that, um, there's no wrong answer. But I ask that because uh, church is not just what happens on Sunday. You know, um, and worship is not just what happens on Sunday. The word is actually calls us to be in a consistent state of worship, um, to be consistently engaged, right? Praying without ceasing. 
Um, and I, I ask that because the, the last thing I want to do is to talk about some ways to engage uh, stronger spiritual practices. So is anybody anybody willing or, or want to share? I don't mind sharing. This is Shelly. Okay. So prior to last week, when you really helped us with the songs, the prayers, and the scripture, which is now what I've been doing, mm -hmm. I would just get up every morning, and before I would get out of bed, I would say a prayer. Mm -hmm. And then I would always pray during the day, but now, since like with, with um, what we're going through with Lenten season at noon is when I've been trying my best to pray but it always seemed like my phone <clears throat> rings right at noon mm -hmm. and I'm like oh do I get that um because I really need to be praying right now and I'll be like God please just give me about like 20 minutes and then I like so then I but I always pray during during the day at work and then I would pray in the evenings before I would go to bed and I would read the bible but I have to say, even though I read the Bible, I don't feel like I had structure with it. I would just go in. I'm like, okay, I want to get through the Bible. So let's start with this particular one. But there was no reason or no purpose as to why I was just reading one. Now I look at what you preached about on Sunday, and then I take that particular chapter and that scripture and then I'm able to just go from there and now that I have these tools that you've provided as far as to be able to look at other means to further understand it I'll, I'll do a better job of it but I have to say the way that you laid it out with the song the prayer and the scripture it is really just gave me a purpose in the morning I get up singing praying and then reading the scripture and i I felt like my worship with God has been a lot better because I do have some structure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Every day between 3.30 and 4, I have my scripture reading. Mm -hmm. I read the silent moment in the scripture related to the story of that day in the upper room, the scriptures related to that day. And most often when I read it, it's it has something to do with what's going on with me. Mm -hmm. So uh, I found that extremely helpful. But that's when I also pray for my class members mm -hmm. and for my church. Mm -hmm. Amen. For me, before I, my feet touch the floor, kind of like Sister Shelley, I pray a prayer of uh, praise and thanks for waking me up and, you know, for that morning. And then I can get up. I have a, um, a place in the house that I love to pray. And uh, sometimes I can't go to it if it's raining outside because it's outside. And I just love to hear the birds and stand there and thank God and praise him and and ask him for forgiveness for anything that I've done and and um then my prayer my um you know I pray um off and on all day and I'll, I'll share this very private thing we have <laughs> we have the uh silent moment in our bathroom <laughs> So it's on the toilet. It's on. So every time you go in there, you know you can pick up the book and read something. But I'm I'm a member of two of the Bible studies, and those keep me going. Um, pastor always goes, Sister Paula, did you, are you are you ahead of me? <laughs> because I'm I don't just take what's in the Bible study. I try to read before I go into the Bible study the women's Bible study and back to Berea, I re try to read scripture throughout the day if I'm doing crafts or artwork or anything like that. And the other part of my, um, I would say spiritual life is reaching out to other people mm -hmm. and sharing. Um, 
sharing God's goodness with them. Amen. 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 Anyone else want to share? I'll share. So um, I too have a special place, Sister Paula, um, in the bathroom, ironically, because it's a large space and I have a, a rug in there. So I do a lot of my morning exercise there. Um, so every morning I start with, um, I'm a, a big music girl. So there's always a song of the day that pops in, that comes to mind or pops into my head. And that carries me through the day, or it may carry me through several days. Um, sometimes I share it. Um, so I start usually with a prayer meditation, the song, my exercises, um, and outside as well, something about being outside in the backyard and listening to the birds and the trees. There's an owl I feel that visits me um, occasionally. And so it's like, I'm the only one who can hear it. Nobody else hears the owl, but I've always had this infatuation with owls since I was a little girl. Yeah. So hearing things like that um, recenters me, especially when there are things going on. Um, I try to once a week have a, we started something called power hour in my household. Um, so me and the children will get together and kind of reflect on things that are going on in our lives. And everyone has the opportunity to communicate about it. And if we need to pray, we pray. Um, and so it's just that time for us to come together and have our own little service, so to speak. Yeah. So, um, and we used to do videos for it and people love the power hours because it really touched on so many things, especially during COVID when we were all in the middle of it. But yeah, those are some of our all things. Right. All right. Great. Anyone else? All right. So there's three tools that I want to offer. Um, the first are uh, two tools for devotion that were handed to me. Uh, the first two, one is a proverb a day, right? So we know that there are 30, 30, 28 to 31 days in a month. Uh, proverb has 31 verses or 31 chapters. Uh, and if you read uh, one chapter of Proverbs a day, by the end of the month, you will have read the entire book of Proverbs. Uh, so for example, today is uh, the 11th. And so today's proverb would be uh, proverb number 11, right? The 11th chapter of Proverbs. Proverbs is a book of wisdom, if we remember from last week. And so uh, Proverbs are, are life lessons and reflections about how to live our lives, the types of people to engage with, the types of people to stay away from, uh, how to... Um, really master ourselves and 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 the environment around us and so the first is a, a proverb a day so literally if in the morning you wake up and you read the proverb based on the day you don't have to guess whatever the date is if it's the 13th proverb 13 if it's the 24th 24th proverb and uh each month you will have read through the entire book of proverbs um uh, i think i've done it for six or seven years now and uh, I don't know that I have memorized every proverb, but I'm pretty familiar with them by now. And it gives me something to tap into. Uh, the second is a psalm for the ages. Uh, so this actually was given to me uh, by a mentor. Uh, and she told me that if uh, each year we know that uh, you were to read a psalm aligned with how old you are. So I'm 42. Uh, let's see, what's the 42nd Psalm? <clears throat> uh, as the heart, sir? Or actually I'm, I'm 41, I'll be 42 in a couple of months. May. <laughs> Make myself older than I am. The 41st Psalm. Blessed is he that considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him out of in the time of trouble. 
The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive, and he shall be blessed upon the earth, and thou will not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed languishing. Thou will make it make all of his bed in his sickness. I said, Lord, be merciful unto me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. My enemies speak, of ev speak evil of me. When shall he die and his name perish? And if he comes to see me, he speaks vanity, his heart gathering iniquity to itself. When he goeth abroad, he telleth it. All that hate me whisper together against me. Against me they, they devise my hurt. And evil disease say they cleave fast unto him. And now he lieth and shall rise up no more. Yea, my own family and friends in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, have lifted up the heels against me. But thou, O Lord, be merciful unto me and raise me up that I may requite them. By this I know that you favor me because my enemy does not triumph over me. And as for me, thou upholdeth me my integrity and set me, be and set me before the face before your face forever. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. Amen. Right? So you could read that each day. You could read that one day uh, at the beginning of, of each week. You could read it at the beginning of the month. You could read it the first day of the year. Uh, but just again, a, another tool, because I know so we, we, we spend so much time trying to figure out the right scripture to read or the right prayer to pray. And sometimes the reality is, is that God honors that we have a desire to spend time. And what I want to do is provide some tools that help us get away from the uncomfortableness, right? Because if we feel like we can't think of a song, can't think of a prayer, can't think of a scripture, then our first default is what? To not do it, right? Like, oh, it's too hard. I got too much to do today. I'm too busy. I already got too much on my mind. But if we have these tools where I know I don't even have to think about it. When I open my phone anyway to scroll, I can see what date it is. I don't even, if before I touch TikTok or Instagram, I can touch the centering prayer and I can do it. We, I, I want to make this easy because life is too hard already. And I want to make sure we have tools that allow us um, some simplicity in our desire to approach God. Does that make sense? Um, yeah. And then the next thing that I want to share in is around prayer. So uh, the one prayer that we can always go to is the Lord's prayer or the disciples prayer, right? Um, I want to highlight that the disciples prayer or uh, our father who art in heaven what Jesus really is giving us is a template for prayer um, it's not necessarily about the words but about the theme um, what Jesus was saying is start your prayer out acknowledging who God is our father who art in heaven acknowledge his holiness hallowed be thy name Acknowledge your surrender to him. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, make request of him. Give us this day our daily bread. Uh, be contrite and repentive. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us. Ask him for support in your day. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And then again, returning to his dominion. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Right? Basic tenets of prayer. If we keep those things in front of us, it's not so much about saying those words, but it is about those sentiments. Help us to have a full and robust conversation with God. Does that make sense? Yeah. The yes, next. Sir. Hey, Pastor, can I just yes, say something really quick about that? Absolutely. Um, and I, I'm going to ask T Taylor real quick. Taylor, how how old were you when you were in me and Sister Nicole's Bible uh, for church school? I believe about Taylor six, seven. Six, okay. Seven. Okay, and the reason why that's important, Pastor, is 
sister Nicole and I had our, had our church school. And so we would let the different kids do uh, a prayer. And some of them would say some, some be silly, some do whatever. But the reason why this is so important, because Taylor just said she was either six or seven. When we asked her to pray and Nicole was like, well, I mean, if you're comfortable, do you want to pray? And so we bowed our, she asked us to, you know, bow our heads, close our eyes. And this young lady started out with the Lord's prayer mm. and then started like praying out of this. It was so insane that Nicole and I both looked at each other. Now we're supposed to have our eyes closed, but we looked at each other. And when I tell you that was so powerful, even now it still sticks out to me about what that young lady did. And here we're trying to be like, well, it's okay if you want to. And she was like, she was confident. She was bold with it. And when she got done, I went to Sister D and I was like, who is she? And D, you may remember, I was like, that girl moved Sister Nicole and I in such a way that I have never, ever forgotten that. So mm -hmm. it don't matter what age you are, you can still move and touch somebody, whether it's through song or whether through prayer. And I just wanted to share that because of just your point about, look, if you don't know how to say anything else in the prayer, if you either start out with that or only do that, you're good to go. She started out that and then continued on praying. And I just want to thank Sister D and anybody else that was a part of her being able to do such a powerful prayer at such a young age. Hmm. Amen. 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 For sharing that. Yeah. 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 Do you even remember that, Sister Taylor? I remember I remember some things from uh, the Sunday school. <laughs> like I was just being myself. Uh, the final prayer tool is uh, what's called the Acts prayer. And Acts stands for adoration, contrition, thankfulness, supplication. Uh, adoration again it, it follows uh, the same formula as the the disciples prayer uh, adoration acknowledging God and and who God is both um, in person but also in relationship to our lives contrition which is just an, another fancy word uh, for repentance uh, having a, 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 our heart to be sorry for the ways that we have offended God uh, thankfulness uh, and thanksgiving, giving God thanks for all that he's done, for all that he's brought us, for all that uh, he's been in our lives, and then supplication to give God control over our day, to say, you know, your will, not my will, Lord. Um, and again, this it you don't have to go in that order, but these are uh, these are uh, elements that help us to have a full conversation with God. These are the things that we can be mindful of. Again, not because there's a such thing as a perfect prayer. The perfect prayer is a prayer with a sincere heart. But I know that so many times our heads get in the way of our hearts. And so I just, again, want to provide some additional tools to help get us out of our heads and connect with the Lord to our hearts. And so... Uh, you are more than welcome to use uh, these tools. Um, you are a part of the Parks Chapel family now. We are extremely happy to have you. Uh, I won't rush anybody to get involved, but I'll encourage you um, that we are going to need more seats. And the easiest way to have more seats is that the folks who are informed, engaged, and empowered are up and working. Um, 
Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Lavoy. Uh, where you work and how you work is why we want to have a strong spiritual discernment practice. These tools are to allow us to center ourselves with God so that the Lord can point us to where he wants us to be of service in the church. <laughs> Excuse me. Thank you. Uh, and as I said earlier, when we started this, it doesn't have to be in something existing. <laughs> While we have a lot of great ministries, but if in your own spiritual practice, in your own discerning, God lifts up something, let's sit down, let's talk about it, let's start planning and putting it in place. What I will say is that we have a tremendous amount of building to do because the church is growing so rapidly. Uh, we need, you know, we've been blessed to start our women's Bible study. Children's church has now started. Uh, we don't have uh, a young adult ministry, right? We don't have uh, a couple's ministry. We don't have a single's ministry. We don't have, uh, we're, start, we're just now getting started on our seniors ministry, right? Um, we, there is a, a tremendous amount of community engagement that folks are asking for. Um, and also we have a significant amount of folks who have served the church for many years and are looking for some new leadership to mentor. Uh, because one thing that I love about Parks Chapel is uh, that they want, they recognize and desire uh, that our church continue thriving and growing. And they know that one of the ways that that happens is that we make room and way for new leadership and hand off the baton. I don't know that I've experience the church that is more willing to do it sometimes it's scary because everybody we all pastor i think this is gonna be it you got to find somebody amen uh-uh no sister lavoy don't be amen in that uh-uh don't <laughs> <laughs> you can't you nah, i'm telling everybody now they can't get away uh but i say that to say that uh there is a tremendous amount of opportunity to do ministry um, as we see more and more folks coming into the church, uh, we're, we'll continue to, to have people that are in need, you mm -hmm. know, uh, and my, my goal is to develop a church that has a heart to be of service to the people. Mm -hmm. uh, and so... I thank you for these last three, four weeks that we've been able to spend this time together. I'm excited about what God is going to do in your lives and through you, uh, both outside of Parks Chapel, but especially inside of the church. And uh, this is uh, recorded, so you can always revisit it as you are in your own spiritual walk. You can always feel free to reach out and connect with me directly. Um, and take some real time the rest of this month to figure out and hear from the Lord where it is that he has for you to be active and engaged. Uh, to that point, I know that uh, Sister Shelley is going to be looking for choir members. They're about to go back to uh, live in-person choir rehearsal on Wednesday nights. And so uh, they are looking for new voices. Uh, the usher board is looking for folks to welcome people both outside and inside of the sanctuary. Um, and that's all over the church. Uh, if you want to be a class leader, there's just a bunch of opportunities. And so uh, take the rest of this month, seek God's face, and um, start having the discussions about where you can see yourself being of service and ministry in the church, because that's what we're all here for. Um, <clears throat> I think that's it. Hey, baby Grace. Uh, Hi. Hey. Hi. Uh, the last is a, a reminder. I know that uh, your class leaders have probably reached out to you about this. Um, but next week is mid-year. 
uh, I would encourage you come check it out if you're able to. It's at the LAX Hilton. It's going to be going on all day. If you want to see the church operate on a, a larger level outside the local church, it's a great opportunity. Uh, we are, and I've been thinking about this all week, beat myself up. Uh, I am asking for volunteers to serve as host for my uncle's uh, reception for his campaign for bishop. But also, if you just want to come and don't want to be a host, that's okay, too. I want you to think you're only invited if you're interested in hosting. Uh, that's just, uh, that's what I'll be doing, being on host. Uh, but we invite everybody uh, to come and participate in mid-year to see the other uh, churches, our other church family, to see the work and the ministry, you know, the ministry of the church on a, on a higher level and uh, to have a good time because we do enjoy ourselves. So with that said, uh, I will ask Sister Yvonne, will you close us out in prayer? I knew you were going to call on me. Ah, <laughs> ah, ah. Oh, okay. Father God, we thank you for another wonderful session of new members class. We thank you, Lord. We pray, Father God, that you continue to bless us, that you keep us. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord. We ask, Father God, for a wonderful service tomorrow. Enlighten us, teach us, Jesus. Continue to anoint our pastor. Yes. to send your word and we pray that we have a good week coming. Yeah. and we thank you lord thank you and all blessings we pray amen 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 amen, amen. amen my darling person right. <laughs> well, great to see you all thanks i love you and i will see you tomorrow morning for worship Thank you. Pat. Love you. Bye. Say bye bye. She looking at the phone. Right, she upset she... Uh, uh, oh, there she is. There we she go. Said bye bye. All right. Love you.